called AUN. Uh, we'll welcome your emails and messages we're gleaning from our website after the break. Please don't go away. Well, thank you very much, viewers, for investing part of your time with us. This is One and One for this day with Professor Maggie Enzyme, the president of the American University in Nigeria. Uh, Madam, shortly before we went on break, we were discussing all kinds of issues. But yes. I, I'm going to surprise Nigerians right here because um, when those young ladies, Chiba girls as they are referred to today, were kidnapped, yes. little did we realize that some of them that escaped would end up in your university. Tell us how that happened and what is the current situation now? So last April when that happened, of course, um, the world's heart was broken that young people would be kidnapped or murdered for going to school. Um, and the world's attention, rightly so, was uh, focused on those who were kidnapped and are still in captivity. But as you know, a number escaped that night, or nights. And um, in May, uh, one of our employees mentioned to the head of my security that her sister had been kidnapped and escaped. And since her words were, since we're a development university, what can we do? So um, a group of us sat and thought about it. I checked with the people I work for mm. and said, what do you think if we tried to bring them, some of them here? So we raised enough money in the beginning, just for 10, to have them one year to prepare for college education, with the full intent of keeping them. But we knew we had enough for 10 to start with. And we then sent her and others back to Chibok to talk to parents, who not surprisingly were very reluctant. Mm -hmm. Their daughters had been kidnapped, and you really want to as one mother said to me, you really want me to leave them here with you that first day? So um, she found 11 because there was a dad who had two daughters. Mm. And thinking she only had enough money for 10, she wrote on a piece of paper, go to AUN on one side and on the other side, wait for another chance. Fortunately, we got to her and the others working on this project and said, no, no, don't ever do that to a parent. Bring them both. So on April, August 30th, my head of security and I drove um, south of Chibok and 11 young women and their parents. You, you, you didn't feel any form of trepidation? No, I don't have that gene, I don't think. <laughs> and so we drove mm. and it was a beautiful drive. But as we got closer, I said to Dr. Rollins, how are we going to find them? Where are they? He said, well, we'll find them. Mm. And we had off the university sign from the side of the bus for obvious reasons but we left our logo and I didn't even know it was on a corner of the driver's side so it was quite a moment we drove into this village <coughs> and I looked up and here was a group of parents and young women and they waved us down and we pulled the vans over 
and we only talked for a few minutes and it was just quite a moment and I will remember because there was there was hope in their eyes there was fear they had very few belongings in my country when you go away to college you have five suitcases and you take your whole room they had little bags they had almost no belongings and they hopped in the car and they were pretty quiet coming back mm. and could I you, could you communicate yes could you try to communicate of course, mm. especially to the parents mm. who didn't know what they were getting into. Mm. Um, they came with the parents? Yes, those 11 came with 11 parents, mm -hmm. which was wonderful mm. because they're very good parents and they were worried about their young, their, their daughters and they wanted to make sure what they were going to next was the right thing for them, especially based on what they had experienced. So the parents spent a few days with us and they toured the campus and they must have gone home saying, it's going to work because all of a Is sudden, it working? oh, it's amazing. <laughs> but we started getting calls. Mm. I want to send my daughter. She was there that night. She was on the list. So we took 10 more. And um, at first they were pretty quiet mm. and they are extraordinary young women. They are, they are bonded by did that they, experience. Did, 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 did they relate their experiences? What, what Very happened? few. Mm. And they, um, they don't talk to us too much about what happened. They're very future directed. They're extraordinary when you talk to them. You ask them what do they want, they will say, we want to be doctors and go home and build Chibok. We want to be teachers and build better schools in Chibok. So they're focused on how they can use their education to improve their community. I I'm sorry to, to, to belabor the issue, but yes. they didn't they didn't share the experiences, the trauma they must have been through? A few have. Mm. And I've asked them if they want trauma counseling, which is sometimes a normal response. These are 21 very religious young women, and they have more than once. We, every night we pray. We come together, we pray, we share with each other what happened. We share the problems we've had. Two of them lost their fathers to Boko Haram during the Christmas break. They grieved together. Mm. So we've certainly offered them counseling. We've offered them whatever they want. We have a counselor on campus. And I think some now are beginning to talk to her. But they're extraordinarily directed to the future. They know this is a wonderful opportunity. They're in class from 8 to 5 every day. They're not enrolled in the university because the, the night of that horrible incident, they were taking exams that day. So we have them in what we call a foundation program to better prepare them for JAM mm -hmm. and WIAC. So they're not part of the university community. Yeah. Okay, they're part of the university community, but they're not enrolled students in the university. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. They're part of the university community. They do athletics. They do other things. They're preparing themselves, believe it or not, to do community service. Mm -hmm. They ask if they could do community service. So um, I think they're an example of what a great education could do for all of the youth in this country because they're writing beautifully, their English has improved, their math and their sciences are coming along. They're extraordinary young women. Okay, you, you, you're an American woman, Professor Enzyme, from California, yes. even though you, you've been all over the United States, Judgetown, Columbia, some of the best universities, you've worked there. Yes. But you're Christian. Are you Christian? Yes. Do you have, and I, I imagine that the greater member of your faculty happen to be Christians? It's both. Both. It, yes. I, was, I was just going to ask, is, is there any, any undulating relationship as a result of your religion? Absolutely not. Mm. Um, we are very much an interfaith campus and community. Um, our students, their faith is their private decision, as it should be, mm. I think. It makes us who we are, but it's private. So there are absolutely no challenges. On the Otomawa Peace Initiative, you know I was in Washington recently, and I brought in three of the members to several of the congressmen via Skype. And what surprised him is I had an e a Catholic bishop and a woman, and they all call each other my imam, my bishop. It doesn't matter if we're Christian or Muslim. It we shouldn't matter. Yes. Yes. And so that's how we feel out there. We respect each other's religions. We do these massive food distributions at the Muslim Council offices with Christians and Muslims. 
Bishop Mamza d does them at St. Teresa's Catholic Cathedral with Muslims and Christians. He has 3,000 people living on his grounds, Muslims and Christians. We can't let the world turn religions against each other. We can't let these terrorist groups divide people. Um, so we've tried to come together as a campus and a community. Um, there, b b before I came to, to do this interview, uh, it was, well, not some sinners, not some cynics, but some negative vibes mm -hmm. saying that, for example, even though we know that the uh, the moving spirit initially of this whole program, American University, uh, Nigeria, it wasn't called that before, I think it was called APTI. Yes. Okay. That could it be that this whole idea is, is a CIA project? That those who, the, the, there's some cynics who feel that way. How do you respond to that? I would laugh at that. <laughs> um, of course it's not a CIA project. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from. Um, I'll be honest, I wish the CIA was focused on education rather than on other things. Mm -hmm. But no, it's a private university. Um, as I said, we're part of AAICU, fully accredited in Nigeria. Let me tell you, the number of people who come up and to see what we're doing and to evaluate us and, and make sure we're doing what we say we're doing, there are many, many. So, no, I wish the foreign aid agencies and the intelligence agencies of the world who focus on um, gathering intelligence and other things would focus on educating the world's youth. I don't think we'd have the problems that we're dealing with if we did. Um, something you said earlier that really, really touches me is a program called Students Teaching Students. Yes. How does that play out? Well, every AUN student has to take a class that's focused around one of our projects. So we don't just throw them out in the community and say, good luck, go teach these students. We're a university. So we teach them how to teach. We teach them what the best research says about how you teach literacy, how you teach math, how you teach science. So we have two major programs. In one called the Stellar Program, students are trained to teach very beginning literacy. And they have their tablets, and they work almost one-on-one -on -one or one-on-three with three students in the primary schools to make sure they're learning how to read in English. They're learning mathematics. Then, in secondary schools, we have something called the Whiz Kids Clubs. So Whiz Kids. Whiz Kids, <laughs> the nerd club. And that's, it's focused on STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Our students are out in 22 secondary schools after school with the Whiz Kids Clubs, teaching these young kids science, technology, engineering, and math. It's extraordinary. You should come and visit. Um, once a year, we have Yola. If I'm invited, I'll come. You're invited. <laughs> once a year, we have Yola Peace Day. Mm -hmm. It started in 2012, and your country was um, going through very challenging times with those riots related to the fuel subsidies. Only 200 people came. Last year, 5,000 people came to Yola Peace Day. 5,000? Yes, came to campus. And we have the finals of these projects. So for the STEM competitions, all these secondary school students came. And I'm so proud that the Yola Governor's Girls School won the math competition. The other thing, and these are our students teaching. The other thing they've just started, and I'm so proud of them. You know, the jam this year will be on you have to use a computer. Many youth have never worked on a computer. So our students, after school, have invited students getting ready to take the jam to come to campus. And in our classrooms, they're teaching them how to use a computer so they can pass that jam. So our students are everywhere. They're inspired by faculty from 35 countries. Everyone who's out there is animated by the mission to try to improve society and to make sure our students have the knowledge and the skills and the attitudes to want to do that. What inspires you and how do you inspire those that you inspire? Well, I don't know if I inspire anyone, but what inspires to, to me, well, <laughs> our childhood experiences. My parents were both airline pioneers and I had the privilege of seeing much of the world through my, especially my dad's eyes as he traveled. So was I he a pilot? No, he was an executive, but he started out loading bags and went on to run the airline. Mm. And highly respected man. <clears throat> and um, 
So I began to see the world's very different. Mm. California doesn't exist everywhere. Mm. Um, he took me to Russia, he took me to China, he took me to Turkey. And I began to really want to know more about the world and appreciate difference. But you never, you never came to Africa? Oh yes, uh, to South Africa mm. a long time ago. Uh, 